Yeah. You, can, you can project. Yeah. Um, I wanted to see if you could uh, all talk a little bit about your particular districts and kind of the political breakdown in your district, demographics, voter registration. Why do you think those are winnable districts? Well, well we only have to, we're, we're only yeah. representing two districts here. The yeah. 15th has a slight Democratic edge, although it's considered an R4 district, which means it generally leans Republican. Um, but I think that we have a real ability, not just because of the slight re registration edge, um, but because of the increased interest in electing quality people to Congress to really, I, it's been identified as a red, red to blue district in, and or one that's being targeted as a red to blue district and one that is quite possible to, to flip. Um, and I think it's a combination of simply having the numbers as well as getting all of those people out to vote. Yeah. And before we switch to Elizabeth, maybe Greg wants to comment further since he's also. No, I would agree. I mean, I, I, um, one of the things that, that is going to be important, goes back to the first question, is, is we, we have to increase the electorate. And if the Democratic Party continues to run a strategy of like going after super voters, that's going to be, that's, that's problematic. And so we need candidates that can go into, into different rooms and speak to different constituencies because we have heavily gerrymandered districts. The, the, the districts really, the districts are not indicative of representative government. So putting Lebanon County with the city of Allentown, it just, it, it, you know, so and once again, once again, so when we were celebrating Barack Obama in 2008 and having a party, Republicans said, okay, you got that, but we will make sure that we take all your state houses, all the governor's mansions, and we will redistrict, and, and we will put candidates in that even the Democrats will vote for. And they've done a brilliant job at it. So it's, it's winnable, but we, we've, got, we've got to be able to increase the electorate. And if we do that, then I think, I think we have a, a, a more than likely shot at turning it blue, deep blue. Not like them. <laughs> so in the seventh, uh, you see that is kind of a typical picture when they talk about gerrymandering. Um, I don't know if they call it Donald kicking Goofy and all these things because there's a part that I think of the district that is actually like a putting green, straight shoot, you know, and it on the on the campaign trail, the most. The saddest thing is that people say, I want to vote for you, but I don't know if you're in my district. My district. And we literally have to pull out the map every single time because your neighbor could be and you might just have missed the mark. That's ridiculous. Have you ever had it where you've asked them, well, who's your current congressman? And they, they don't say, know. I don't know. They don't know. <laughs> um, yes. So we really have an issue in the seventh, and if there's a ruling, it may change shape before the election. So that's kind of, right now we have about a 60,000 voter gap, even though the party, or excuse me, during the presidential election, Hillary won the district, they voted Hillary and then went back down the right side of the aisle, um, which is unfortunate. I used to be a Republican, and I talked about that the reason why I left, I, I said, there was a time when the Republican Party, like Abraham Lincoln here, your picture here, represented the individual and did the right thing for the people. This is not the Republican Party we see today. Mm. And they continue to take away from people and continue to give away to the top 1%. That is not, that is not the power of the individual. And when I signed up to run for office, I had to think about where are my values? Who represents my values? And because I've switched, I've been able to talk to other people about switching because they're aware that this party is not representative of them. So not only do I want to win the seat or turn the seat blue, I want to turn the district blue because there's a lot of people who are unhappy and they just need an invitation to come so I've been working on that as well and talking to people. It's okay to switch. I switch. And then they switch. Um, so I think that's a powerful thing. We, we really need to do our work. You've got to get in front of people. You cannot just keep 
saying we're going to put out ads, we're going to put out mailers. What made the difference in this last election was the door knocking and the face-to-face -face that a lot of you did. And we need to really energize that power, too, because it's the power of the people. I'd like to append something to that question, to Randy's question. You know, here we are in Berkeley County. Um, Frank, can you, that's the, mm -hmm. uh, that's what do you like? Seven. I want to see <laughs> the, um, that's the Berkeley Bur Bur Department 7? Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to see all of them, all the congressional districts. There we go. Um, that's not all of the seven, though. No, no it's not really all the seven. Right. It's Berkeley County. All of them. diamond here. We are no congressman's top priority. Nobody thinks first about Berkeley County. Not even this guy, especially not this guy, who represents 87,000 people, Hispanic majority people, who live right here in the city of Reading. He has no office here. He has a mobile office, which means that he's got a, like, a low-level staffer who comes in with their cell phone a couple of times a week. You cannot call. You cannot have, you know, you have to physically go there in her little meager office hours. So that's a problem that we have here. That's partly why people don't know who their congressman is. That's a question I ask everybody. <laughs> you know, and it's partly just because people have been asleep for so long, and it's partly because they don't show their faces here. So, I mean, we used to be dead in Freeport. I mean, plus they changed things. Oh, right, plus they changed things. Right. Change yeah. But yes. still, we, did you see death? Did he come? Did he? <coughs> no. My mom was a Republican. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And we've got to hold them accountable. And the only way that they're going to get the message is if you fire them for not showing up for you. I mean, a lot of people say to me, I wish I could vote for you. Um, I'm not in your district. And I say, dollars vote too. <laughs> but also, a vote is a vote. And if we, on election night, that's what we count. That's what's most significant. So if they're not doing their job, fire them. That is the message. And you know what? Maybe it will send a message to Washington that we're not going to buy it anymore. And I think that really is what we've got to do. I, I'm looking forward to my favorite part, the reason I'm here tonight, is I love meeting people. I love it. Um, I've always been a social person. But to me, that's what gives me my energy, is when I'm able to meet people and connect them to solutions. It's not enough for us just to say, I'm, I'm against Donald Trump. We have to have a vision of where we're going and what we want to accomplish as people. The only way I'm going to know that as your representative is if you're talking to me and I'm here available to you. There's so many ways to stay connected. It's, it's just blows my mind. You call and you get your answering machine again. And we all have made calls. 